but it's all stodgy and cold. Spam fritters. Um, they're horrible. Plates of boiled veg. I remember them being quite stodgy and things like spotted dick and lots of puddings and spam fritters and mushy peas. Um, they're horrible. Cold and stodgy. Just hard on the plate, really. Disgusting vegetables. The peas are horrible. I'm coming home with them in my knickers, actually. <laughs> They were so Clearly, some of those parents don't have too good memories of their old school dinners, and I have to say, mine were equally awful. That pink blancmange with that stuff on top of it, and you had to chew, and the teacher there prodding you to eat it before you could go out and play with your mates who were lucky enough to have packed lunches. But it's all changed, and today we're going to show you that school meals are a really good thing. They're not only good, they're nutritious and delicious. I'm here at Sherberg School in Hampshire and we want to see whether we can get those parents to change their minds about school meals by letting them try what's on the menu today. Pauline's preparing the roast as I speak and we'll catch up with her later. But firstly, where does some of the food come from? I mean, what about that so-called horrible veg? I'm John Hayward uh, and I've been here all my life. The benefits for the uh, schools to have locally grown food is that it's traceable from the wholesaler back to the grower. Um, everything can be seen that it's fresh and uh, the job's being done right. I'm Chris Hayward, John's son. Um, I've been here all my life, 25 years. I've been working here for about eight years. Uh, these cabbages are actually going to Axton's and then on to the Hampshire schools, um, but we also send all around the country to London and the different wholesale markets. It's local produce going to local schools. Um, you can see where it's being grown, it's fresh, it's cut and delivered straight into the school, prepared and on your plate. Hmm, I love fresh cabbage. Now, we all remember school milk, don't we? Well, milk is just a very good, healthy product. No sugars, doesn't rot your teeth good for your bones. It's a meal. My name is David Bowyer. I'm a farm manager and I'm a dairy farmer in Hampshire. Well, cows are milked twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, and our milk is collected every day. So it would be between 24 and 48 hours that you could be pouring out your milk onto your cornflakes. Cows milk in lactations, which is a nine month period, and they'll give about eight to 9,000 liters at our farm, but our milk purchasers, they tell me that they will distribute 42 million one-third pints of milk in a year to primary schools. That's a tremendous amount of milk, so it's cartoned off ready for delivery. In Hampshire, a lot of work goes into making sure that all of the meals provided satisfy children's nutritional requirements. So let's go back to Sherbrooke School and meet Food Development Officer Evelyn Cook. We cater for as many of the five fruit and veg as we can. We do two portions of uh, vegetable and one portion of fruit. I think it does take a lot of pressure off the parents if you know the child has, uh, has had a good lunch, particularly in the, in the winter when it's cold and wet and you know that that lunch has been hot. They are healthy and, and you get bananas and they make you healthy. Well, they're nice and hot and they, they give us a lot of, quite a lot of energy when we go outside and play. In September 2005, when the menu was put together, we worked with the Hyperactive Children's Support Group to ensure that any item that was put on that menu did not have any of the 70 plus listed additives and preservatives that the Hyperactive Children's Support Group thought were bad for children. I like eating vegetables because they're nice to cook and um, I, like, I like eating um, on Tuesday, I like the pizza, but I like having all the puddings and all the biscuits. And a healthy meal for a child at lunchtime, if you're looking at the whole plate approach, you're looking at a third is your fruit and veg, a third is your carbohydrate, so made up of bread or potatoes. You're looking at then the last third is made up of three things. It's made up of your protein, it's made up of your dairy, and it's made up of fat, which is the smallest fat and sugar is the smallest amount. Different varieties like vegetables, yeah. meats, potatoes. 
moment of truth after, I'm just going to work it out, probably in the region of about 35 years. But it tastes just like it does at home. It is better than what I remember, because I just remember potato croquettes, baked beans. I can't remember ever having roast on the menu. It tastes better than I was expecting. <laughs> I'm eating the cabbage and the meat at the moment, and um, it all tastes nice and fresh. Yeah, very tasty. Nice, yeah. Uh-huh. Really nice, actually. We enjoyed them. Yeah, really tasty. I liked it. You know what? I think these parents are already changing their minds. Pauline Howell is the lady who cooked it all. One of the concerns of the parents voiced is that, you know, they don't want their kids to sit down to a plate of food they don't like the taste of, they're not going to eat. We found that, you know, our reception children that started eating um, the, the fruit and veg that we're offering them, they're now going on to continue eating that in their, in their next years. Are you satisfied, hand on heart, that you can prepare a school meal, school dinner, which is better than the average pat lunch? Oh, definitely. They're getting fresh veg. You know, you can't beat it. Um, they're getting real meat. Um, it's not fried. Nothing on there is fried. It is difficult to provide a packed lunch that actually meets all those requirements. If you've got a child who loves fruit and vegetables, then you can put fingers, fingers of carrots and things like that in it. But unfortunately, a lot of packed lunches are rather loaded with carbohydrate, and the protein element is usually quite small. So, school meals tick all the right boxes as far as nutrition goes. But what about taste? Back to the parents. It had flavour. It was tasty. I really thoroughly enjoyed that because my little one normally has sandwiches, so it's an insight for roast dinners for her and other sort of menus that they can have. Yeah, it was very nice, very enjoyable. My daughter, she um, emptied her plate, she had everything, so she thoroughly enjoyed it as well. He ate very well, so you know, I tried to get him to eat like that at home as well, so it was pretty good. But I was really impressed with it. Um, my children eat a couple of times a week anyway. I work shift work, and so if I'm at work in the evening, then I know that they've had a decent meal at lunchtime. So that's the story. We've seen the cabbages coming out of the field, the milk coming out of the cow, and one thing we've seen for certain is that school dinners are nothing like they used to be. They now represent a nutritious and delicious meal for your children. I give my little girl a school dinner every single day. So why not think about doing the same yourself? Ah, uh, Chris, oh. I think you've got work to do. You're lucky, Pauline, you know. Why? Because I'm an obsessive cleaner. This worktop is going to glisten, baby, honestly. I'm going home. Bye. Thanks for dinner.